with this. And of course, Biden wound up winning big in Alabama. We knew that pretty early on in the night. It didn't take very long at all for them to declare it in favor of Biden. And, and that's expected given uh, Alabama's polling had showed for quite some time that Biden was an overwhelming favorite in Alabama. So since Alabama did, was a big part of putting Biden on top in the delegates for the Democrat nomination, and he is likely to be the Democrat nominee, I just wanted to uh, remind Democrats that this is the guy who is very likely to be the guy you're going to run against Donald Trump to be president. Hey, it's my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this is the, oh, you switched on me. This is my wife. This is my sister. They switched on me. <laughs> so Joe Biden, at the beginning of his big Super Tuesday victory speech, he, forget, he forgets which one is his wife and his sister. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason that he did so well in Alabama. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can say that because I'm from here. So he just gets mixed up. And the thing is, that's something that could probably happen to anybody. They didn't switch on him. He just called out the wrong one. He forgot which one was on which side. And, and that could happen to anybody. But in the context of Biden's tendency to have gaffes constantly, I think that that does make a big difference in that if this were a one-off thing, that this was just something that happened to Joe Biden this one time, it's still funny, but it's not like indicative of anything else. With Joe Biden, this is just like, this is just another Tuesday, uh, not a super Tuesday, just a normal Tuesday for Joe Biden coming across it. I'm sure the guy's tired and he's had a long day and everything, but still, like, that's a mistake you really shouldn't make. And And I love that he gets, uh, he hears from behind his wife saying, you know, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm your wife or something to that effect. And then it throws him off and he's hearing that he's like, and I'm Jill's husband. Wait, what? <laughs> so he's just completely at a loss, but, uh, that's not even the most egregious, uh, Joe, Joe Biden gaffe. And I'm not just talking about of all time. I'm talking about just this week. Joe Biden had another gaffe that was actually even worse because it dealt with the Declaration of Independence. We know these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. <laughs> so Joe Biden just loses it with the Declaration of Independence. I got to see that again. Come on. One more time. One more time. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. <laughs> you know the thing, you know the thing, the, the Declaration of Independence thing. <laughs> oh, guy cracks me up. Like, again, the first clip that I was showing you was Super Tuesday, and him starting that victory speech. Like I said, that's something that could happen to anybody you kind of look the other way. Everybody, you know, could could have that, and especially it's a big moment. You're you're trying to get up on stage as quick as possible and whatever, and you just get them mixed up behind you. That could happen. But the Declaration of Independence, this guy's been a senator since 1812, and was the vice president of our country. He should be able to quote the Declaration of Independence, especially arguably the most famous line in it. He's like, all men created something, uh, you you know the thing. <laughs> Joe, Joe Biden's mind is gone. And I, I, despite all of this, despite, remember, this just happened this week. This isn't even including the thousands of other clips of Joe Biden, like going off the rails, the, the hairy legs and the roaches comment that we talked about earlier this year, or, I mean, I mean, there's hundreds of these things where he's asking. I think my personal favorite is where he's asking the guy in the wheelchair to stand up. He's clearly lost a few steps. And despite this, you're not going to see what you saw with President Trump, where there are going to be hordes of psychiatrists in a revolving door coming on and talking about how, in my professional opinion, he's just not fit for the office of president. That's not something you're going to see. That's just not something you're going to see. MSNBC and the other big alphabet soup networks, that's not something they're going to discuss. You're not going to see op-eds by clinical psychologists in the New York Times or the Washington Post talking about how can we really trust somebody that has exhibited 
possible signs of mental illness with the nuclear codes. That's not a thing that is going to happen. I mean, they could have wheeled Joe Biden up in a wheelchair with a string of drool coming down his mouth and he can't eat solid food anymore, and you would not see that happening. That is just not a thing that will take place. Because the media has a very clear liberal bias, and if this is their only shot to defeat Donald Trump, they don't care if they have to, to bring the guy up on a respirator. They'll take it. So that's one of the things that you're going to see. And, and again, I don't wish Joe Biden any ill will. I understand dementia. My grandmother specifically went through this, and it was a horribly sad thing to watch her lose her identity and lose who she was slowly. And I, I don't want to in any way belittle that, and, and I hope that that does not happen to Joe Biden. But I'm just saying we do have to think about the country and a guy that clearly isn't, his elevator doesn't quite go all the way to the top. I don't think that we can trust the country to that, but this is the person whom the Democrats have selected to be their nominee. Essentially, all the other Democrats decided to kamikaze themselves right before Super Tuesday in order to rally the anti-Bernie coalition behind one person. Elizabeth Warren did not do that for her friend, Bernie Sanders, who is a horrible sexist that thinks women can't be president, despite the fact that there's no evidence whatsoever that Bernie ever said that, that Joe Biden was perceived as being the only guy that might be able to beat Bernie, and if Bernie wins, then Trump basically gets an automatic W in his president for four more years. And they said, well, we can't let that happen, and so they all, one by one, decided to kamikaze themselves and drop out of the race. You might be thinking to yourself, Caleb... I'm more than four years old. I remember in 2016 that essentially you had the same thing with President Trump and Ted Cruz, and the difference is your Marco Rubio's and your John Kasich's and everybody else did not drop out and allow Ted Cruz to sort of rally his supporters behind him before Super Tuesday or really well into uh, days after, after Super Tuesday and several primaries afterward, there were still several candidates in it. Why is that? Why is it when it came to the establishment Democrat Party, they all rallied behind uh, Biden and they didn't do the same thing for Cruz? Well, there's two reasons for that. The first being that the establishment despises Ted Cruz. The establishment likes Joe Biden. That makes a difference. I'm not saying that it's the only thing that makes a difference. I don't even think it's the primary reason that you saw that happening. But the establishment, they wanted Jeb. And when they couldn't get Jeb, they wanted Marco. And when it became abundantly clear that they were not going to get Marco, they still didn't want Ted Cruz, and they kind of figured, well, if we get Trump or Cruz, that's really a loss for us, so we're going to rally as much support as we can behind Marco Rubio, and maybe there's a way down the road that he ekes this thing out. And, of course, it just never happened. But the other reason, and I think this is actually the larger reason that took place, it comes down to a difference in the way that Republicans and Democrats think. We're very different creatures by nature, and one of the differences between us is that Republicans tend to think in an individualistic term. So in other words, when we think about economic policy, our ideas normally, again, there's some rhinos that are an exception to this, but normally what Republicans think of is, let's empower the individual. Let's let the individual go out, make their own decisions, make their own mistakes, and make their own profit and benefit from those things. And then that will be the way that our economic policy is run. We'll let people make their own choices, their own decisions. Democrats don't think that way. Democrats think as though they are a collective. That's why when it comes to things like health care or the economy, they think everything should be run by the community, that people should get together and decide things as opposed to people making their own decisions. And I'm not saying that every single Democrat and every single rank-and-file Republican uh, uphold these ideals. I'm saying as a general rule, this is the truth. Republicans operate in a way that I'm going to do what's best for the individual, and when they are the individual, they say, well, we'll do what's best for me, and then people make their own decision, and that's how we'll hash it out. And I'm not attributing any moral good or bad to either one of these lines of thinking, I'm just saying that this is the way that they tend to operate. I'm saying this purely as an observation. And because of that, your Marco Rubio's and your John Kasich's, why, why should they 
opt out. I mean, it doesn't benefit them to drop out, so why would they do it? With the Democrats, oh, well, the, the Democrat Party, the Democrat machine, the community has essentially decided that Joe Biden is the guy, so we need to honor that, and in order to do what's best for the party, we'll do what doesn't necessarily benefit us individually. That's the mindset the Democrats have, and, and that's the reason that they're more apt to do something like they did. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.